Good morning, good afternoon, you are tuning in from or if you are watching our replay, this is The Awesome Journey. I am your host, Kelly Steinica, and not with my regular co-host, Christy Howard, who is halfway around the world right now, <laughs> but we are just two girls that met on LinkedIn 15 years ago, live on opposite sides of the country, have giving hearts, a passion for paying it forward. And I may have prayed for living louder in my purpose. And now here I sit in front of a microphone bringing you the awesome journey. And for those of you that are new here, and just a reminder to others, one of our primary goals with the awesome journey was to bring incredible individuals to share their stories and challenges. Because, I mean, let's be honest, we are all united in our unique journeys. So with that being said, I feel like I'm going to say goal crushed uh, this week yet again. I'm just so amazed with the people we've had thus far, who we have today, uh, and who we have coming up. Um, and then I just want to give a little bit of uh, some exciting news and a little bit of background. My guest co-host, my very special guest co-host for the next few weeks while Christy is away is Miss Kendra Maples of Culture Crush. <laughs> and our special guest today is Blake Steinica. He is a growth marketer for Clusive. Inclusive is the first online uh, educational or employment training for the visually impaired. And I could not be more excited to have both of them here with us. And some of you may be wondering right now, <laughs> Don't you do the same? Yes. Yes, we do. Uh, Blake is my nephew. And to tie it together, for those of you that were watching last week, uh, we had Clint Hatton of Big Bold Brave, an author of the book by the same title. If you didn't see it, go back and watch it. It is so worthy uh, and bring a Kleenex. Uh, but within the book, when I was interviewing Clint to be on the show, um, we had already booked and I had not read Big Bold Brave yet. And he said, well, I know you don't know this yet, but in the book, I highlight five individuals that live big, bold, brave. And I, of course, was like, oh, my gosh, that's amazing. And he said, well, one of them is Blake. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, at the front door, what are the odds? I had no idea. And then to bring us to where we are today, I was going to have Kendra on as a in the past, and Blake is also going to be on Kendra's podcast, I believe, next week, talking about accessibility. And this week, uh, I believe it's Thursday, the 18th, is Global Accessibility Awareness Day. So it was just kind of like stars aligned. This all completely makes sense. Uh, let's have Kendra be on with Blake and uh, let, let's do it. So I want to dive right into it because I want to have as much time as possible with Blake. But before we do, I do want to hand it over to my special guest co-host for the next few weeks, Kendra Maples. I'm so excited. <laughs> I love when things happen full circle. Um, I had the chance to have you on the Culture Crush podcast now I think it was like a year and a half ago. Yes. Year ago it was crazy. And yes. so then you and I have had the chance to stay in touch and stay connected. And I love when we get to make introductions. And you made the introduction um, to me of Blake. And so Blake and I have touched base a few times. We're now trying to figure out when he can be on the Culture Crush podcast. And we actually changed the date. So we'll we're aiming for June with him now because, and we'll, I'm sure we'll get into it when we have a conversation, when um, we start talking, because I, I am very intentional with the podcast of how I match folks and the underlying thread. And so we're switching Blake to another month to really highlight this topic of accessibility. And, okay. and I'm just so stoked because even from the conversations, Kelly, that you and I have had and the things that you have told me that Blake has taught you, right? Now they've taught me. 
Blake, you don't even know probably all the stuff that, that I have taken away from all of these conversations. So now then it's full circle. I get to jump in and help co-host. And then when Kelly said she was bringing you on, I was like, this is epic. <laughs> so, so I'm stoked. Um, and Clint's on here. I saw his comment in there. So right full circle. We've got Clint listening. Yes. Blake's been in the book. So without further ado, Blake, I am so stoked that we get to loop you into this conversation today because if we can't get you on the Culture Crush business podcast yet because of alignment and whatever, I mean, the stars aligned and made it happen for the three of us today. So I'm so stoked. Um, I want to kick it to you, Blake. I want you to just start with, you know, you give us a little bit of background on you. Obviously it ties in with this whole conversation of an awesome journey because your awesome journey is beyond awesome. And it's helping other people learn and, and create a better journey for others. So I'm going to kick it to you, bud. I want to hear from you and have you Tell Kelly and I and everyone else about your journey so far. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, super excited to be here and have this opportunity to share. And I, I first want to clear up something for everybody. You may see me and see Kelly and wonder how I'm her nephew. Just to know, my dad is like way older than Kelly. Um, just so everybody. Knows. You're my favorite. I just wanted to. Make so <laughs> <laughs> uh, just had to share it, make it funny there. But uh, just to share a bit about my journey. Uh, so I grew up in San Diego and I still live in San Diego. And I, like many kids, would play a lot of different sports and was a very competitive student and was able bodied and definitely took a lot of that for granted. And it was a, a big, all those things were a big part of my childhood. And at the age of 16, during my junior year of high school, I started to notice some slight vision loss in one eye. And I wondered, like, just probably thought it was something I never noticed and thought, eh, it, it, it's nothing, but we we'll may as well get it checked out at the doctor. And went to the doctor and they said, yeah, something seems to be a bit wrong. We don't know what it is. Long story short, through many different months of lots of different tests and uncertainties of what it could be a did lots of very um, uncomfortable needles and procedures and whatnot to then finally uh, be diagnosed with a condition called lhon or labor's hereditary optic neuropathy and i went from thinking that my optic nerve was swollen and it was going to go away to then i was going to face vision loss in both eyes and lose my central vision, becoming legally blind. And many of you are probably thinking a lot of things in your head of what does that mean? How can you do certain things? And what do you? what is legal blindness? What is central vision loss? What's peripheral vision? And I had to face all those questions myself in first hand. And near the second, near the end of my first semester of my junior year of high school, I was, faced with this diagnosis and wondered all sorts of questions of the shock of how am I going to keep up in school? Could I go to college? Could I get a job one day? Would somebody want to be with me in a relationship? Could I continue to play sports? I'm probably done doing that. All these things just seemed like a real death sentence to my independence as I wasn't sure what all of would entail. And over the course of the next year or two, I slowly lost all, most all my central vision, which basically means I have a big blind spot in the center of my vision. It's just super static, blurry nothingness, uh, but I do still have peripheral vision on like the sides, but your central vision is where your super important vision is, where you see all your detail and you look at everything straight on and your peripheral vision is actually quite bad. So it provides some unique challenges and vision is very subjective and difficult to explain. But I started to understand not, or what the more important part is, it's not, the important thing isn't necessarily 
oh, what is it going to look like? But how is this going to affect my life? And I was quickly surrounded by people in uh, school and family and friends that showed me I could do the same things just in a different way. And for example, in a time when I wanted to not necessarily cut myself some slack, but I was talking with the school administrator just saying, I'm probably going to have to take easier classes and and my grades are probably going to suffer just thinking seems like logical and they're like nope you're going to do the same things and just in a different way and you're going to have to learn some new things and i sure did over the course of the rest of high school and then into college i had to learn lots of new different types of assistive technology um, screen reader softwares and magnification tools and how to make my coursework more accessible and college turned out to be a very challenging time where the hardest part for me was not the content but it was making things accessible and when i would approach every new semester and in each assignment i would be having to work all this extra time and effort to work with my professor to get the materials early yeah. to get the right people at the school to convert them in an accessible format with my screen reader and some of this may sound all sorts of confusion like all confusing, but just trying to make points of it was a lot of extra work. And when st when peers would say, oh, it took me an hour to do this assignment, it pr may have taken me three or four hours. And my brother had to reteach me things that I didn't follow along in, in class. And in the end, I ended up graduating college in three and a half years with my degree in marketing and minor in Spanish and got a really high GPA. And I didn't realize <laughs> yeah, um, I I came to realize like I, you know I I guess I did really well at this and the content was not the hard part cuz I could in the end get the good grades but I found that the hardest part was the technology and it was my biggest frustration and best enemy but with the success I found I realized it's also my best friend and I came to realize that my problem isn't that I can't see, it's that I can't do stuff, but technology allows me to do stuff. And this time of life was a really important place for me to realize that technology is this great equalizer and something that I have a really big passion for. And since, since college, I've worked in software sales and worked in marketing in the mountain bike industry, as I've always had a passion for mountain biking. A, which is a whole, a whole other story in a place in life that has helped me continue to build a mindset of adapting and overcoming and mm -hmm. literally getting back up after crashing and falling and quite literally but also helps figuratively in other areas of life as i've relearned to to ride and but i found myself being in a place or heavy on my heart to want to work in technology and make an impact in this field that I see as a place for such positive change and uh, hope for progress in the blind community. And so last year I kind of pivoted things and I was like, I wanna work in technology and accessibility. And I started my YouTube channel, Adapting Sight, as a way to just help teach other visually impaired people to, about technology, share about accessibility and also show others how I make cameras and content creation accessible as that's been something I've gotten into since my vision loss. What was first something that I just got a GoPro so I could travel places, take pictures, come home, zoom in, see all the things I could in person, turn into well, what if I got good at taking photos and oh, what about video? And it grew into this huge passion of really pushing the limits of what I can do with technology and I think cameras are a powerful tool that people can use to tell stories. And it's exciting to see those tools becoming more and more accessible in another place that I've just grown my passion for technology. And throughout the course of the last year, I grew a variety or obtained a variety of roles in accessibility, doing web and software accessibility testing, which is where you kind of go through uh, websites or software using assistive technology like a screen reader, which is a technology I would use that reads out loud what's on my computer screen. I control it with shortcut keys. But the thing is, not all websites or apps or software is set up in a way to work well with the screen reader. 
and other types of assistive technology. And so through web accessibility testing and training, I was able to learn more and apply my experience of helping improve the accessibility of digital assets. And it can definitely be this like really technical nitty gritty thing, but you know, seeing the improvements of accessibility has been an amazing thing. You know, there's been times in, there were times in college where at the start of the school year, or at the start of college, I there was zero screen reader support for a certain kind of homework assignment. And then as I was, as I was about to graduate, I could actually start using it with the screen reader. And it may seem like this, all oh, this headache of making the HTML better on your website, but it's a real game changer for unlocking access. And throughout last year, I, I, I realized that I have a big passion for accessibility or just greater access in education and employment. Since 70% of the blind community is unemployed and it's pretty like shocking and, and disappointing. And there's also a lot of underemployment. And so much of this is just a skills gap. And so with that said, a, almost a year ago, I started doing uh, contract work with Clusive. And last September, I went full time with Clusive. And what Clusive is, is as it is mentioned a bit before, it, was, it is an e-learning platform built for the blind community to learn technology, occupational and career skills training all to help remove barriers to employment and as i mentioned with this big unemployment rate it's a really big skills gap there and since there's so much confusing technology to to learn there's not a great place to learn it hence me being very self-taught with a lot of this there's all these extra skills you have to know about navigating or disability in the workplace of disclosures and accommodations and there's just not great accessible learning platforms to be able to learn things as well. And so Clusive is kind of there to, to solve that problem and fill that gap. And in my role, I, my title is a growth manager and I get to basically help run marketing and get to increase the awareness of Clusive in the blind community to generate leads and more business. And it's an amazing way for me to be able to use my lived experience my professional background and just what I have a passion for and a mission that I really care about and feel for. And it's been a uh, an awesome journey <laughs> to, to get here. And it's, been, it's really been uh, a product of amazing uh, support from you know my family, church community, and you know people in the blind hockey community. As blind hockey has been a huge part of my life of having people that can raise the bar for what I could accomplish in a time of life when I really wanted to lower it. And there's, yeah, there, there's many different ways we can continue to go, but that's kind of at a high level, a summary of, of me and, and my journey. Love it. And and I, I, I kind of want to go into, because this is sort of interesting, because I'm, I'm in a, a group chat uh, of recruiters here on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Uh, with Daryl Clack, and I, I don't know if he was able to be here live, but I know he was going to watch this. Um, and in the group chat of all these recruiters yesterday, accessibility came up and how much that organizations do not have a lot of accessibility in their in their plan or in, in their strategy of what they're doing. And I, of course, was like, well, y'all need to join in our LinkedIn Live and check out Clusive because Clusive actually, they pay for recruiters. These are graduates of Clusive's curriculum that are looking to be hired. And I just want to highlight mm -hmm. again that Blake said that the percentage of people uh, in the blind community that are unemployed is 70%, seven zero. That is so unacceptable. And, and I want to encourage all of the recruiters, because that's part of the reason I did bring and Christy, the awesome journey together to begin with, was to help job seekers, connect them with recruiters, get insights from, from all uh, to help people, because this is really impacting so many people on so many different levels. Um, but of course, Blake, being my nephew, of course, I know things that 
And, and I'm almost embarrassed to not have known so many things. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a career executive marketer. And so we have brought, you know, to my forefront and I was like, holy mackerel, I don't know anybody that has an accessibility best practices within, within their business. I've been asking all sorts of uh, agencies, other business owners, and it's, it's shocking only because mm-hmm. everybody is so claiming, you know, DEI and, and, and the most basic things that we do incorrectly with accessibility. And, and Kendra and I have had many of a conversation about this. And, um, you know, I do want to say we, we've got a lot of great guests coming in. They're, they're not asking questions yet, Blake. They've just been saying like, wow, we're one. so amazed <laughs> by your story. And uh, thank you so much for sharing because it's bringing something that they weren't aware of. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that, that came to mind also when we were putting this together and because you, you mentioned, I remember a few years ago when I was living in, in Dallas, Texas, uh, one of my friends, I showed Blake's USA blind hockey card. because so I was like, look how badass this is. Like, you know, <laughs> USA jersey. And I remember him looking at it and he said, wow, he doesn't look blind. And I was like, uh, what does a blind person look like? <laughs> and, but I also had the moment of, well, he's in my family, so I have a totally mm-hmm. different perspective. And I may previously also have had the same perspective because we think we we put things in a box and intend to um, to not open our minds to things. Mm-hmm. So I think with Blake, for so many reasons, you know, within our family, and I can say this is, you know, I'm I'm his auntie and I could not more man he's grown to be and he's taught me probably more in my life than I've taught him. Um, and it's just kind of astonishing how you, you look at the world a little bit different and Mm -hmm. outside of that box, because I know with Blake's journey into blind hockey, uh, he kind of had the same thing of like, what does blind hockey look like? And and had the same sort of in the box situation. So one of the things about being here that I'm so proud about bringing to the forefront is, hey, people, we just we just want to share information and op- open people's minds to see beyond, you know, what you thought was possible. And, and mm-hmm. again, for recruiters, as far as uh, Clusive, uh, checking them out, I want to highlight Clusive as much as possible because I think it's incredible what they're doing. And I think it is such a blessing. Led him. I know it is such a passion for him, um, and you know that's where I sit. I could go on and on, obviously, for days. <laughs> but uh, Kendra, what are your what are your thoughts? Well, going back to what you were saying about, um, you know, sometimes we end up in a box, right? And mm-hmm. and I don't think we put ourselves in these boxes intentionally, right. but. This is why the conversation of inclusion is so important because even with the conversations I've had with the two of you, I am a very inclusive person. I'm very connected with community members. Um, I've worked with veterans for a very long time. So I have that in the back of my mind when I'm looking at things as far as accessibility, right? But accessibility, there's so many facets of accessibility, right? Accessibility for you, Blake, is very different than accessibility for my new dear friend, Steve, who's going to be on a panel um, in July, who he was a a world-renowned chef and he had a stroke and now he is paralyzed on half of his body and he's in a wheelchair. But he's doing amazing things too. He's not letting it stop him. His version of accessibility is very different than your version of accessibility than maybe Kelly and I, right? And, and we get caught in these moments and like Kelly alluded, right? Companies are wanting to be more diverse and inclusive and, and, you know, accessible. And it starts as a check in the box, but we don't know what we don't know until we meet 
a phenomenal human like you. And even just you and I, when we were having conversations and with Kelly, little things like with your screen reader, right? The, the hashtags. We're so yes. big on hashtags nowadays. And your screen reader doesn't read the hashtag because it's all in one line and there's no capital letter. That to me was mind blowing. And I never would have known that. And so that yes. is the piece of this that is fascinating to me. One, that you're just a freaking amazing human <laughs> and that you have taken this in the better direction, right? You could have dropped out, not pushed through, but instead you spent the four hours on a project that took somebody else an hour, right? And so Blake, I want to hear from you, like, as you're in this space, how do you see these conversations shifting in people as they start to get to know you and, and hear about what you're still doing? I mean, we could, we could even go into the mountain biking thing. That's just blows my mind, but we could save that for later too. Um, <laughs> like, what does it look like from your perspective, right? Because you're teaching us, but what does that look like from your perspective on how you're teaching people and what you maybe have an ask for people when it comes to this accessibility space? Yeah, I, 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 it's a good point to bring up. And in, in the best way that I think I see the shift in this conversation is uh, is having more people with disabilities being employed and more people that can go into different workplaces and be able to help make that change because mm -hmm. i think you kind of have to at times go out and and be the advocate be the the person to to champion like be, building more accessible and inclusive work workplaces and maybe mm -hmm. it's it, it's going to be more uncomfortable. It's going to be more challenging. Uh, you're going to get more pushback when you are the person with a disability that is going into this new employment situation that they've never had to deal with accommodation or their tech stack is not accessible. And, mm -hmm. but I think that's the really the best way to go about it. And I know sometimes people say, well, you shouldn't have to do that. And people should just be inclusive and welcoming. It's like, ideally but like <laughs> you, you want to hit it on both sides but you the best way to grow is through that like those challenges and un, like uncomfortable situations out of your comfort zone and it really has to be led by any disability community to make that change and bring more awareness mm -hmm. and i think that just speaking to digital accessibility which kind of hits closest to home to, to me and what I do. And I think it's just looking at how does digital accessibility affect the role that I'm in? Because yes. you may, uh, you know, you may work in accounting and be like, oh my gosh, our website's not accessible. How am I gonna fix all this? Well, like you're not the web developer, but you could look at is the you know payment software that you're using accessible for the, uh, your customers when they need to like submit expenses or, mm -hmm. or whatever it may be. What maybe makes more sense is, is the, uh, the marketing professional could that is in social media could look at how am I making all this external content I'm creating more accessible for a variety of users and understanding the accessibility features of different platforms. And then they can maybe nudge their web developer to say, Hey, like, these are some things that we could do to improve the website's accessibility. The best thing you could do is work with a, an assistive technology user mm -hmm. uh, to make those improvements. There are guidelines, the web content accessibility guidelines, which is a helpful reference, may just confuse you even more, but <laughs> this conversation can sometimes, can sometimes go back to like compliance. Yeah. And this isn't just a legal or compliant thing. It's really about creating more access and opportunity for people just like anybody else and uh, but they are there as a reference so you know and I'll also just to anybody on this I'm more than happy to connect on LinkedIn to help answer any specific questions or connect anybody with any other organizations uh, but it's something that is going to take 
1% changes in everybody to be involved, not to make it seem more daunting, but to make it seem more approachable uh, to if everybody kind of sees their part in moving things forward. Mm -hmm. And, and what you were saying, right, there's, there's multiple people involved too. It's not just the finance guy. It's not just the marketing guy. It's every angle and every person, right? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. It's it's not just your web developers and software engineers. Everybody can be involved. Yeah, it needs to be a conversation within the organization. And I think, you know, that's kind of a bit what we're hitting on and like, hey, start asking at your company, like what you're doing, because I, I think it's surprising whenever I've brought this up to some companies and they're like, oh my gosh, we, we don't have any best practices for accessibility. And they're almost embarrassed. Like, oh my gosh, I, I didn't even didn't even think about it. And mm. I was like, wow. And I said, the only reason I'm thinking about it is because I have someone who is blind in my family. And I'm like, wow, I haven't thought about that as a career marketer. So it definitely makes me see things. Um, but I also think from the perspective of what Clusive is doing to help uh, the blind and, and visually impaired get educated to be able to go out and apply mm-hmm. for positions. What is the one thing, because I, I'm sure this is going to be a very layered uh, question answer situation here, Blake, but I'm thinking about when you are someone going into an organization and you're applying for a position that you know that you would be a perfect fit for, but maybe need some certain things in order to accommodate you because of your situation. When do you bring that up within the, the interview process? Because I would imagine for many, that's got to be, gosh, am I going to be putting myself out of the running or what does that actually look like of of what I say and how I approach Mm -hmm. it? Yeah. And even in the beginning, like, when you answer this question, even in the beginning, when people are applying for jobs, right? You have those questions at the end that they say don't matter, but it's, you know, are you a veteran? Are you a female? Are you this? Are you white? Do you have a disability? Right. So it starts before you even get past. Right. The knockout questions. Yeah. 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 This is a very big topic and conversation that, uh, that, I've had many a times with friends and people that can can have varying viewpoints on this, but I think an important just preface to have is there's sometimes this something I've I've been told in the past and an assumption a lot of people can have is if you have two people with the same resume, one of them has a disability, we'll just say this person's blind, then they're the employer is going to pick the the able bodied person. And I, I think I, I believe that for a long time. I think I believe that still, like in, in many circumstances, is a reality. And I think that forced me to, to be like, okay, then I'll just achieve 125% of what my peers can do. And then, then they'll see me at 100% of others. And yeah, it's good to work hard and accomplish things, but that will like eat you up and it's really difficult and you can find definitely some unnecessary overachieve achievement in uh, certain areas of, of the blind community to that point, because, you know, we're, we're afraid of what people may think and how we may be treated. And there's this assumption that people may not think we can do as much. And to the question, I think, in my opinion, I think it's best to disclose as soon and early as possible because it's, it sometimes it's as awkward and as uncomfortable as you make it. So if you're confident and upfront about it, and maybe you know, I've, it's been an incredibly uncomfortable, humbling, humiliating, nerve wracking process. But you, you know, you try to be confident in it. I think it's really helpful to have. And I, yeah, I, I just I feel like sometimes you may disclose early, and you may have some bad experience, not get an interview for some oddly suspicious reasonings and then you know you're like oh like they, they weren't being inclusive and they like discriminate against you or whatever it's like well like you probably wouldn't have wanted to work there mm. but 
maybe you bring it up and there are some awkward conversations, but you can work through it and slowly navigate things together. And I think it's always important to understand the challenges that any employee faces, but it should be up to the employee to communicate what those challenges are and the employer to be receptive to helping them through it. And I think a lot of people could get afraid of like, oh, these accommodations are gonna cost a lot of money. And most of the time it's just gonna be like, hey, this is, it, it's gonna depend on the role, but I'd say in a lot of roles that I've been in, it's just like, I need this, this is a technology I use. Does it work with the technology that you're using? And it can be a little dicey if you're like uh, some government agency that has like a secure firewalls and certain software won't, screener software won't work with it. But these are very edge cases. And a lot of times people already have their technology or the things they may need and the accommodations aren't gonna be something that costs money. Maybe it might be like, hey, I need a bigger monitor. And it's like, sure, we'll just swap it with somebody else. Uh, <laughs> or there's one collecting dust over here. Or if you do, you're going to provide that accommodation that does cost money. It's going to be unlocking so much potential. Mm -hmm. And I think anybody should in invest in their employees' greater success and productivity. Uh, and I think just for the employers and recruiter side of things, it's just being more open to hiring and interacting with people with disabilities and realizing that you know, it's going to be new and uncomfortable, but just having a, an open mind and realizing if you want people that are really are adaptable, creative, can persevere through things, are determined, like that's what a disability causes you to do. So I feel like it's it's seeing it more as an asset is, is super important. Yeah. And I, I just, as you were saying all that, I'm thinking that, that uh, but going, out, I would think that would yeah. be semi beneficial for someone with a visual impairment of any sort, because then you're able to use your own equipment, and then now maybe don't even need to have that conversation. What do, What are your thoughts on that, Blake? Yes, I remote work has been amazing for any for anybody, and especially when on one angle if not able to drive, it's nice to not have to deal with that. Yeah. And it allows me to expand my reach of where I wanna work. And I can work for a company that's based in Austin and has people scattered all around. And it is definitely helpful where uh, I can create my own setup here. And you know, we got, a, when I was hired, each employee gets like a stipend for their home office. And I was able to use that for certain things that would help me. Sure, it's it's great. It's getting certain things that anybody else maybe would, but it's accommodating my space for my best use case. And it's it's also nice when a lot of the, it's not like you have to go to a workplace and connect to their servers. Like we're using all these other tools, uh, like you're using the Google, Google suite of tools and your Salesforce and, whatever social media tools. And as these tools are becoming more and more accessible that we rely on as companies, then it helps create more inclusive and accessible work environments. Mm -hmm. So there's like, there's a lot of key players that have to like move things forward and remote work and the big software companies that we use a lot are definitely improving their accessibility. Uh, some is still is slower moving than others. But it's definitely been a really helpful thing to have. Well, and I, I think this is one of those interesting things now as we've gone through COVID and everybody went remote, right? This is one of those things is now having this ability for people to be more remote and work from anywhere. The flip side of that is the accessibility piece, right, for the blind community, I think, Blake, when you and I talked, now it means you don't have to worry when you're being forced to go into an office. Now, you don't have to struggle with just getting into the office is an ordeal of its own. How do you, do you get a ride with your wife? How do you, you know, do you Uber, make sure you're in the right Uber, like all of these crazy things just for you to start your day. Whereas if we can just let people start their day from their home, 
where you already have, like you said, you've got your setup. Maybe you just need a couple extra things here and there. You've got your setup. You've got your tools. This hybrid and this, you know, work from home and remote thing, it helps this accessibility piece for folks so much more. Um, and it's been a crazy conversation that I've had with a lot of people lately since talking to you, Blake, because it all goes hand in hand, right? All of these conversations of inclusion and accessibility and culture, right? Like you said, some of those companies, they might pick that individual that doesn't have the disability. Well, one, that's their loss, but two, yes. you don't want to work for that culture anyway. And okay. so all of these pieces just kind of overlap and they become this whole conversation. And I just love, you know, that I've learned and been able to pick up pieces from you and even from Kelly that she's learned from you. And, and now it's just this, this big meaty conversation. And so you get to be an advocate not only for the blind community, you get to be an advocate for, you know, helping people get the technology to be more accessible, but also this conversation of hybrid and flexibility, right? You get to be an advocate in all of these areas. And I just, I've learned from you and I think it's a pretty amazing, pretty awesome journey. You've yes. And I do want to share that we do, we do have a question here for you, Blake, um, uh, from Clint. So mm -hmm. are there any organizations on LinkedIn that are advocates and influential that any of us could follow and share posts with other business people, HR people, recruiters, et cetera, to help create broader awareness and solutions? Yeah. In, in terms of on LinkedIn, um, there's two people that come to mind that I think are great to follow. Uh, Cam Baudouet. Yes, I've learned uh, so much from him too. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. If you could put his name in the chat. Yeah, we'll put it in the chat it's, for sure. It looks like it's cool. And Meryl Evans is another great person uh, to follow. She, uh, yeah, she has a lot of great tips and shares from her lived experience as well. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think of other other people on LinkedIn. Those two are just a great place to start. And mm -hmm. I, they post a lot. They share a lot of resources. And other organizations uh, that I think could be relevant in this conversation, Lime Connect <clears throat> is an organization that is for people with disabilities. They have a job board and resources. Uh, for employment on the other end, they have uh, their employee partnerships or employer partnerships can hire people through Lime Connect if they want to and hire disabled talent. It, that's a cool organization. And one other organization that you could look at on LinkedIn that I, I feel like I do see a good amount is Fable. Mm -hmm. uh, and Fable is a, a company that does like accessibility slash more so usability testing Ooh. that uh, companies, if they want to test their software website with actual assistive technology users, they can go through Fable. I've done some work with them and there's a cool organization. I feel like they share a good amount on LinkedIn, but I feel like that's a, a good couple of places to start. Fantastic. And we'll be sure to share all that. And, yeah. and I encourage anyone yeah. If you have any questions, because I know sometimes it's a lot to take in and be like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know any of these things. Please do go back to the chat later, send your questions, do connect. I mean, I, I know I say this, doing lives because we're trying to be private. We're doing them because we're trying to get the word out of something that we think is helpful for everyone. So feel free to connect, mm -hmm. reach out, ask questions. Etc. And I, I know we're coming up here towards the end. Um, and really what I wanted to do, and, and Blake, I'll, I'll allow you to decide if, if there's enough time or not, but I would love to, to have you tell a little bit about your, um, your athletic journey. And when uh, Kendra was talking about mountain biking and Blake mentioned it earlier, y'all, we're not talking about that Blake's no. riding on a flat pavement on a mountain bike. It's no. going down a mountain on the rocks on narrow paths uh, with a guide. And I mean, 
because I'm his auntie, of course, it always, it gives me an adrenaline rush when I watch him, but I'm always like, man, I'm sighted. And when I was younger, I would never have done that. Like it is amazing. Uh, if you would like to share a little bit more about your athletic journey, Blake, as we wrap up, I would love that. Yeah, for sure. I, yeah, I think sports were definitely something that I quickly thought I was going to be done doing. And I was playing lacrosse in high school, had to stop doing that. And, but hockey and mountain biking were like my two favorite things. And they're crazy enough and can be dangerous enough on their own, uh, especially with mountain biking. I've always been the person that wanted to find the craziest way down. And so that kind of lends it to be a little bit more difficult to continue. But with both things, it was this slow journey of realizing, okay, I could, I feel like I could continue to do this, but just have a different way of just in a different way. And it's, but the big thing that unlocked for me was uh, there was a variety of things. It, it was, it was getting around people that showed me I could keep doing it. And it was going to a blind hockey event after being like, no, like, I, I don't know. Like, I don't want to play with these disabled people that are probably like kind of weird. It's going to be kind of slow and not fun. And like, I went and like some of them were weird and I loved it. <laughs> because I was like, You're my kind of weird. And in, in terms of we're in this weird situation where I'm like, wait, there's other people like me that grew up playing hockey and lost their vision and I could keep playing and it's like, well, these people are pretty good. And it's like, I, would, I could, I could relearn these things and it would just take time. Mm -hmm. uh, and kind of to not to, to put you on blast here into Kelly, but to your point of like, a lot of times people will say like, wow, like, like I can see perfectly and I can't do that. I, I can't like play hockey that way. I can't mountain bike, whatever it may be. And I always like uh, taken aback for that and don't always know what to say, but you know, what one time and playing hockey, someone, someone uh, playing hockey with sighted people, someone told me that. And I was just like, well, like I, I just practice a lot. Mm -hmm. And they were like, or I, I practiced a lot in my, my girl. Yes. And they're like, yeah, well, I, I guess I'd rather just sit on the couch. And it was this interesting point of like, I, it is crazy that I, I do some of these things, but it really is just a matter of doing it a lot, practicing it a lot, mm -hmm. believing that you can. And realizing that it, it also had to realize like my, my vision may not work, but my body still does. Mm -hmm. And I think we can uh, set a lot more limits on ourselves that are not true or very accurate. And all these things, like I hope they can apply to all other areas of life and uh, for others. And, and we can realize like not to limit ourselves as much and know that things are a lot of time, just a matter of, of practice and, uh, learning from your mistakes because through all I can share the highlight reels things I've done in sport but I make way more mistakes than others but I know that's gonna make me better and these things I can apply to other areas of my life and I think it's important to find something that it's fun to adapt and overcome in like sports so that I could then apply it uh, in other areas of life that I've been through in school and in work and just other other things to to build that character and confidence. So that, I guess that's a, a, I don't know how much more time we have. I'm happy to keep sharing on any questions there, but that's a kind of quick overview of, of sports and stuff there. Love it. So Kendra, what are, what are your final thoughts here, my dear? I just, I'm a huge fan of the Stenic family. <laughs> and Blake, I love that you said in there though, you were, you were talking about it as, you know, you have the passion to keep doing it, to keep practicing, to know you're going to fail. You know, I have things that I, I do that people think are crazy, but then I have other <laughs> things that are probably less crazy that I wouldn't want to do. Right. So it is hard yes. to kind of put it into perspective of like, you look at it as I'm, I'm just doing what I love and I know I'm going to, I'm probably going to crash and I'm going to make some mistakes. Right. And, and you are continuing your journey and by you continuing your journey, doing some crazy stuff that there's no way in hell I would do it either. Um, 
but right. I'm going to have other things I'm going to do, but you are, you're going through your journey and you're teaching so many people along the way. And so I love that we get to highlight you here. I love that we're going to highlight you on culture crush, um, you know, and, and have that conversation. However, we can continue to be an advocate for you because you're being an advocate for everybody else. Um, I'm a cheerleader for this family. So just know that. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. And and what, one really quick point to what you said. I think I like how you said some people see some things you do, you think they're crazy. And other stuff they don't, it's like actually hard. And it's like, if I showed you the craziest things I've done, the most uncomfortable things, like it would be this videos of, me trying to sit through an accounting class that I'm following through none of it on and I'm sitting there not trying to break down and freak out or uncomfortable process in certain jobs I've had mm -hmm. in situations or trying to access some new software and it doesn't work and I just want to throw my computer off the roof. Like those are the challenging things yeah. um, that people don't always see and, and get kind of a side note, but I just, this is, Always getting to share and talk helps me better uh, process and know how to communicate these things to others. So yeah. thank you for, for helping me process through all this. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So uh, Dean, just to answer your question about Blake, if he's yo-yoing between San Diego and Austin, yes, Clusive is based in Austin. Uh, Blake does live in San Diego. He does get to go to Austin on an occasion, but I, I'm pretty sure is 95% uh, remote. Is that right, Blake? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, I, I've I've been to Austin once so far, um, but I know I'll be back. And um, I've traveled for other work events and conferences. But um, if you are in Austin, hit me up too. So yes, and then Kendra to play on uh, culture, uh, inclusive culture is totally rad because one of the things is stipend for him to get a cowboy hat. Because they have cowboy hat yeah, Fridays. Yeah. And I was like, uh, yes, please. <laughs> I mean, amazing. So shout out for that. And you know what? We could continue to talk for, I have no doubt, hours and hours and hours because there is so, so much to learn. But it was so important to me to get to be able to share this and such a blessing to be able to have Kendra and Blake together to share on this week of Global Accessibility Awareness uh, Thursday is the Global Accessibility Awareness Day, and Blake will be joining me on uh, the Hour of Empower with Donald Cohen. So be sure to check that out. I think our, our key word that day is hope that we will be talking about. Um, so I can't thank both of you enough for being here today. It has been like an honestly just a dream. I mean, I could go on about Blake. And, and what you have achieved and how you even inspire this old marketing executive to continue to be better and share what you've learned and or what you've taught me and what you continue to teach and share it with the world. And Kendra, for your passion, for what you do with culture, for organizations, and also helping spread the word of others and being just an ardent champion for others and their voices. So I appreciate both of you so much. And to everyone out there, we look forward to seeing you next week at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the awesome journey. And go out and make it a great day and enjoy the journey.